Today's podcast is brought to you by Anchor. And if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, let me tell you, it is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I can't wait to hear what you create. You are listening to the award-winning Welcome to Your Life, Midlife Made Easier podcast. I am your host, Certified Life and Health Coach, Renee Reed. On this show, I help midlife women increase their self-confidence, self-care, and self-love without guilt. Because when you do not take care of yourself, the world suffers. Are you ready to live the life you deserve? On today's show, we are talking about self-care and your career, and I'll be sharing with you three ways to make sure that you are still doing something you love. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Renee and welcome to another episode of the Welcome to Your Life podcast. So happy you're able to join me. If you didn't notice, I have changed the intro a little bit and also um, the mission and the description of the podcast. So we're going to be focusing a lot more on self-care, self-confidence, and self-love. And the reason I did that is because the clients who come to me, these midlife women who find me and entrust me with their midlife journeys, they come to me for a variety of reasons, weight loss, relationship insight, um, career change. And what it all boils down to, I've found over these last, you know, five or so years that I've been coaching, is that it all boils down to how we speak to and treat ourselves that really impacts our self-confidence and our self-esteem and really determines how far we are going to step out of our comfort zones and live the lives that we deserve. So I am hoping that these upcoming episodes will really help you and me to hone in on our self-confidence, our self-love, and our self-care. So on today's show, we're talking about career change and how to make sure that you are doing something that you love. You know, self-care and your career. It's very important that you are in a job that is more than a job to you, that you still have the passion to complete the work and to impact the lives of the people you work with and the community that you serve. So, you know, there was a time when you joined a company that you were expected to stay in that company until you retired. That is no longer the case. We see that with our millennials, you know, they give a company two, maybe three years, and then they're moving on to the next position. Those of us in midlife, you know, the the baby boomers among us, that's not how we were taught. We were taught that you found a good job, you gave it your all, you were loyal, and in return, that company would take care of you. And maybe that worked for a while, but now we see that, especially during this time of the pandemic, as companies are forced to close or drastically reduce their workforce, 
that we have got to start taking the lead on our career choices. So even in these unprecedented times, isn't that what they keep telling us, right? We must make the choice of a career that also supports our self-care. You want to make sure that you're doing work that you love and you find purposeful and doing those two things, just finding work that you love and that you find purposeful can be instrumental in helping you to reduce your stress. How many of us are doing the thing that we love, right? If you're not and you're finding that you're burnt out, you have a lot of anxiety, maybe it's time to take a step back and re-examine and not to be afraid to make the change. Many of us over 40, 50, and 60 are afraid to make that leap into something new. And so we stay in things that no longer serve us because we're playing it safe. But as my millennial son just told me, you only get one life and you have to enjoy it and you have to enjoy what you're doing, especially if you are in a job that requires you to work 40 plus hours a week. How grueling is it to be in a position where you are putting in your all 40 plus hours and doing something that you do not enjoy? So I want to tell you and encourage you that you can change careers in midlife. I did not become a coach until I was 55. I spent 14 years in social services and I thought that's where I'll be until I retire. But I was so burnt out and so anxious and so overwhelmed um, with the amount of hours that I was working um, and it really did impact my health because I gained during that last couple of years about 43 pounds. I was just eating my feelings. I am a stress eater and I was eating my feelings and it was, you know, horrifying when I went to the doctor and she told me that I was pre-diabetic and pre-hypertensive and my cholesterol was way over 200. I knew that I needed to make a change and I'd always wanted to go into coaching, but how do you explain that to people who say, well, you have a good job. Why would you want to do something that isn't, you know, that might not work? But I have to tell you that this has been the best change in my life. So I want to encourage you, no matter where you are, no matter what age you are, if you want to start dabbling your toe, sticking your toe in the water to see if there's something else that sparks you and lights you up inside, then let's do that. You know, it can be very disheartening when you are seeking a new job. Now, I am not going to sugarcoat it for you. When I was looking for work, my company closed down and I was looking for work and it took months for me to find a job because companies are looking to hire, you know, Employees who are younger, less experienced, and cost less than my two master's degrees and 20 plus years of experience. But there are things that we can do to ensure that we get the position that we want. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing I want you to think about is 
to make sure that you are running to something rather than away from something. If you're miserable in your current position, you may gravitate towards anything that looks better. How many of us have, you know, said, I'm quitting and I'm taking this job with this other company? I actually had a friend who did that. Uh, she quit. She took a job with another company. Turns out that company, that agency was the same as the one we were working for. And so she just, you know, still felt the overwhelm, the disconnect and, you know, and unsupported in her role. But now she felt like, well, I can't leave here because I'm stuck. And so I want you to think about why you want to leave your current position. You know, you will be more likely to be happier with your career change if you choose the best field for you. And the more you dislike your current job, the more critical it is to take a deep breath and to examine your options. So make sure that you are running to something and not away from something. The second thing you want to consider is you want to avoid making a career change based solely on financial considerations. Now, I'm going to tell you that that was hard for me. I spent 18 years as a stay-at-home mom, so I was, had no income. So I am way behind when it comes to uh, saving for retirement. I was way behind. And so I was taking positions based solely on how much they paid. And that was the worst thing I could have done. You know, making a good salary is important. I'm not going to say it's not. But when you use that as the sole criteria it can yield disappointing results. Because even when you make a large amount of money, it's not going to make up for spending eight plus hours in a job that you do not love. Midlife is not the time to take on more stress because stress leads to health issues. And this can be very expensive for us. So that's why we need to start thinking of our career and our self-care in the same vein. Because if we are not doing activities we enjoy, activities that feed us spiritually, physically, and financially, then they are going to take more out of us than they're depositing. And that could lead to some disastrous um, physical ailments. And the third thing I want to share with you is to not, you know, shy away from obtaining the necessary training or education that you need before you, you know, step out there into your new job. So you want to get a new job uh, and that new job may require some additional training. Take the training. Midlife is not the time to stop learning. And it's hard to change careers without updating your skills. When you walk into that interview, you want to make sure that you have the required credentials in place. So some of the things that you can think of doing before you start to change careers is you might try volunteering and I suggest that for everyone even you know people who are not in midlife volunteering at an agency allows you to see or a company allows you to see exactly how the company works the culture of the company how they treat their employees what are the benefits to working there and what are the drawbacks right so you get an inside look into that company just by volunteering there, you know, one or two hours a week. 
And if you're unemployed, you might try looking at some temporary agencies and becoming a temporary employee. This will also allow you to get that necessary experience that you need to put on your resume or CV. Now, when you begin your search, it might be slow at first. So I want you to make sure that you are showing yourself some self-compassion. Network with colleagues in your field. Now, networking was really hard for me because I am not a talker. I'm not someone who, who will walk up to you and say, hey, how are you? And what do you do? So networking events did not work for me, but I have friends right? You have friends who work in uh, different areas. Let's reach out to them and ask them, hey, I'm looking to make a career change. Can you give me some insight on your company? Or can you give me a referral to another company that might be hiring? So don't be shy about networking with your colleagues and let go of the negative self-talk. Negative self-talk will only delay your progress. So speak kindly to yourself and surround yourself with a nourishing support system that will cheer you on and pep you up and love on you when you need it the most. Hey ladies, I hope that you enjoyed today's show. Remember that just because you are in midlife does not mean that you have to continue doing something you no longer love. Be encouraged and let your passion be your guide. Don't forget to share this podcast with someone you love. And when you're ready, join us in the private Welcome to Your Life, Midlife Made Easier Facebook group. This is a curated community exclusively for fun-loving midlife women. This is your village, a safe place to vent your concerns and celebrate your wins. Just head over to the Welcome to Your Life Facebook page and click join the group. There are three questions that you have to answer to be considered, but I'm sure you will pass that with flying colors. I will see you next time. And until then, remember this, you are stronger than you give yourself credit and more blessed than you know. Have a wonderful day. Peace.